Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today I'm revisiting Black White Clerics, which received a ton of upgrades in the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, although one of the main payoffs for the deck remains the Shadow Rite Priest, a 2 mana 2-2, two -two, giving other clerics we control plus or plus one, and we can pay five mana, tap it, sacrifice another cleric to search your library for a black creature card and put it straight onto the battlefield. So that's why we've got some spicy one-offs that we can try to cheat into play with the priest, including a Toxrill, the corrosive, leading to the slime surprise, a 7-7 saying at the beginning of each end step, including the opponents, put a slime counter on each creature we don't control, those creatures get minus one minus one for each slime counter, and when they die we get to make a 1-1 one -one slug creature token, so this will quickly decimate the opponent's board if they're playing a creature deck, and if we're up against a control deck instead, we can get a hoarding brute lord, 8 mana 7-6 flyer with convoke, so it's actually pretty realistic to hard cast it in some games, especially with the tokens we generate from the evangelist which we'll get to in a second and then when the dragon enters we get to search our library for any card exile it face down and then for as long as it remains exiled we can play it and cards from exile also have convoke so that can potentially search up more value cards to try and outgrind those more controlling decks so having the flexibility of two expensive creatures is also quite nice and in some games we might be able to activate shadow right priest twice to get both of them and then there's some additional black creatures such as the new amalia we could search up which is one of our few non-clerics in the deck but it still has a great synergy as we're inherently a life gain deck and Amalia is a 2-2 with a ward making the opponent pay 3 life and whenever we gain life Amalia gets to explore so if there's a land on top of the deck we can put it in hand if it's a non-land card we can either put it in the graveyard or keep it on top while getting a plus on plus one counter on Amalia and if we somehow get to 20 or more power on Amalia which can actually happen with enough explore triggers if we start doubling effects with our roaming throne then Amalia will destroy all other creatures on the battlefield so that can also be a nice sweeper effect to to pull us ahead. And speaking of Roaming Throne, another payoff for these types of decks, a 4-4 with Ward 2, when it enters we'll name Cleric, and then we get to double all the triggers of Clerics we control while turning Roaming Throne into a Cleric itself. And keep in mind, Ward triggers from other copies of Roaming Throne also get doubled by Roaming Throne, so the opponent will potentially have to pay 4 additional mana to take out Roaming Throne if we've got two of them in play with the same creature type, so that's another subtle synergy that you might be familiar with if you're playing the blue red pirates deck in standard as well where we've got similar interactions and then we've got four copies of the sanguine evangelist 2-1 cleric with battle cry so it can pump up our team when it attacks and when it enters or dies so we get to make a 1-1 bat token so that's another way of going wide making lots of bodies which can in turn gain us a lot of life with creatures like a lunark veteran gaining one whenever another creature enters and we also have three copies of the sadistic pilgrim which will gain one whenever another creature enters while draining the opponent for one whenever another creature we control dies on a 2-2 with death touch which is also quite solid in this deck and then a roaming throne a doubling all those triggers like evangelist making additional bats or veteran gaining additional life is one way we can quickly reach 20 power with amalia and then a voice of the blast another payoff for incidentally gaining a life as it picks up an extra plus one counter eventually gaining a flying and vigilance and indestructible as well and then I like to run a few more one mana clerics with a traveling minister which can also gain us more life not quite as good as a veteran but still nice to have and then we've got a few spot removal spells can also maybe search them up with a brood lord if we just need to get rid of something and then at 3 mana the full set of inspiring overseer which will gain a life and draw a card when it enters so also benefits from a roaming throne while maybe helping a grow voice of the blast and amalia and then a two copies of peacekeeper this one doesn't synergize too well with the roaming throne since it's not quite the same etb effect as we have with author clerics but it's still quite good as a 3-3 cleric that can disrupt the opponent's hand and it's going to be quite essential when facing some more controlling decks that rely on sweeper effects to keep our board in check and then of course we've got our curve toppers and in our mana base two copies of the restless fortress which also has a life gain synergy in this deck as another way to close out the game and then a cavern of souls of course a huge upgrade for the archetype making our clerics uncounterable under most circumstances sometimes you also want to name golem since roaming throne is not a cleric when you cast it sometimes you might want to name dragon or even slug to make our other curve toppers uncounterable just keep in mind that it won't help you cast amalia since this is not a cleric so that can be a reason not to play a cavern right away 
And then we've got a bunch more mana fixing, including Courtyard. One upside of Courtyard over Cavern is that it actually helps make mana of any color for activated abilities of the chosen creature. So it actually helps with a double black activation on a Shadow Ride Priest, whereas Cavern does not. So sometimes you can be without double black to activate, but we still have plenty of other black-white dual lands, of course, to help fix those problems. And then we've got uh, the channel lands for added interaction as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck dolls. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand Pilgrim into Overseer. Don't love having the Broodlord in there, but could eventually cast it. Our opponent black a green. And a Dread Knight. Okay. Pilgrim's unlikely to stick around for long. But uh, yeah, hopefully a Roaming Throne does so we can get our value. Could be worth it to wait on Overseer until after we play Roaming Throne. Cut down deals with Pilgrim. And Underdog, so we're definitely on the back foot already. Double Minister is an option. Not to try and block with it, but just to delay Overseer until after Roaming Throne. Our opponent's looking at the graveyards already. Maybe a Lord Skitter's incoming. For now, take six. And a Tortoise is next. Makes sense. Does find a land. Okay, we're definitely counting on the Roaming Throne sticking around. Since I'm not attacking, I may as well try and gain some life here. At least it doesn't die to go for the throat. Could see them activate their Restless Cottage, attack all out, deal a bunch of damage while getting another Tortoise trigger. It would put us to one. It's gonna be a Trespasser instead. So probably not gonna see any attacks then. And Red Knight still gets in. I'll block. They can draw. And uh, yeah, want to try and hit our land drops here with Overseer. And uh, again, probably just going to gain life with the Ministers. Evangelist makes it pretty easy to convoke a Brute Lord as well. Boseju or Roaming Throne, ouch. That's painful. At least we get a land out of it. But now our opponent gets a nice attack in. It is cheaper to activate Cottage, but it would be tapped here if they go for it. So we're gonna see a Dread Knight instead. Probably reasonable to trade for Underdog now. Although, let's see, if I play Evangelist, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, then I could still play Broodlord if we keep Overseer, but then I'm probably just dead to an all-out attack next turn, especially if they play the Dread Knight, so that's not an option. So yeah, I think we have to trade. Not in great shape. Found our priest, gives us a little bit of hope. So if we can survive a turn here, then uh, maybe next turn we get to activate priest and get Toxril. Could also keep the ministers back this time to try and trade or double block. Probably going to be more useful than uh, gaining one life each. Opponent Blitzing Underdog, can still animate Cottage. Alright, so we're definitely behind. Priest can't afford to block. So 
So I can chump cottage with the bait. Double block maybe the tortoise. Keeping a minister and trade for trespasser. And then I can sack minister next turn to get something with shadow right, which will likely be toxril. We do get another bat at least. And Amalia's next. So could play one creature, play Brute Lord, but then we only have one blocker. That's not gonna work. So yeah, it's gonna be Sack Minister, get Toxrill. And then I'll have two blockers at three life after gaining one. So if they blitz and animate Cottage. I guess we can take two from Dread Knight since it's gonna shrink down. And then block block, yeah. Can't attack with the bats. Still dead to a lot of things. Opponent goes for a cottage activation. So that we can block with Toxril. Chump, take two down to one. And a Liliana, just sack Priest. I'll have this fight finished before brunch. That's forced. Oh, I've always hated crowds. So let's see here. We actually might want to just block Foundry. So when it gets an extra counter... It uh, generates another slug, and then Dread Knight will also die. So we get two slugs. And yeah, now we might actually be in decent shape, although still dead if a shield shows up, which is maybe a reason to animate Fortress and gain some life. Slug can finish off Liliana. Let's see, can deploy a double evangelist. Brute Lord could also try and get some life gain. I think for now it's still safest to animate Fortress, and then I can play Amalia as well to explore. And then maybe keep the slugs back while we get in a nice chunk of damage. Okay, points at 10. And what can they come up with? A Dread Knight to draw. Opponent Blitz's Underdog. Can just jump with the Slug. They do still have some food tokens to gain life. still get a slug in return. Their opponent's at a virtual 10 life, so even if I get a removal spell with a Brute Lord, it's not like we have a guaranteed lethal. But uh, yeah, we should be pretty safe now at 3 life. Probably just better off playing a bunch of stuff from my hand. Although, let's say we Play Brute Lord with Convoke, tapping three, can get a, uh, a Lunark Veteran, for instance, play it, and then still play Evangelist, and then just not attack with Toxrill since they can chump anyway. Yeah, that's also reasonable. So play that, play Evangelist, build up our board to set up lethal next turn, we'll get another slug end of turn. And now we're less likely to die to something random.
Got multiple large creatures in case of a Gixus command, so we'll still have something left. So can't think of too much that can go wrong. And our opponent explodes. Wow, what a close game. All the way down to one life. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Some nice life gain enablers to go with Amalia and eventual sacrifice fodder for Priest. Opponent also on a life gain deck. Okay, we'll see which uh, style comes out on top. For now, I do want to prioritize getting my 2-drop in play. So it might just be Fortress. Could also double 1-drop next turn. Although it's going to be easier to fit those in alongside a 2-drop on turn 3. And reinforcements. Alright, so this is more of a red-white tokens with uh, Convoke. So... Could go for Pilgrim here as a life gain enabler, but also a decent blocker. And then next turn go Amalia plus Veteran, or I guess Veteran into Amalia is also decent. And for now we can try and hold off some attacks. And then Amalia will help hit our land drops as well. This looks like main phase reinforcements convoke Knight Errant. So that's a powerful start. No, no Convoke. All right, that's lucky. So next Veteran into Amalia. Since we need to hit those land drops to get up to five. And I can already picture Toxtril on this board. No, Toxtril's on top of our deck. Now what? Yeah, if I uh, draw it, I'm not going to be able to cast it. If we put it in the graveyard, it's gone. So that's unlucky, but uh, yeah, still need land, so we'll have to make it work with our Brute Lord instead. Did find a land. So don't get to quite live the dream here with Toxtril, as the one toughness creatures just keep adding up. Frontliner, just gotta build up our defenses so we don't lose to a recruiter. So don't mind a roaming throne here doubling our triggers. And gain even more life, explore even more. And we'll eventually have to fly over. <laughs> There's our author payoff card. They're all showing up. Now Broodlord we could still cast with all the bad tokens from Evangelist. So we can maybe keep that one around. Definitely got to hang back to prepare for a big attack from a recruiter here. Bunnycorn's also quite large. At least Pilgrim's got Death Touch. And they did now find a Knight Errant as well to convoke. Okay, that's scary. Opponent's doing a lot of work with two lanes while we're <laughs> putting all our payoffs in the graveyard. Recruiter and another Knight Errant, yeah. They were one-off convoking again. So, time for Evangelist, which kind of replaces itself in terms of uh, convoke mana. And a Voice of the Blessed isn't bad here. So what's my plan? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven with the extra bat. Can convoke Brute Lord, but then we leave ourselves very vulnerable to a recruiter attack. So this turn I might just go Priest, pump the team. And we can likely find a couple more lands before we need to keep voice on top. That's a lot of land. Alright, Overseer's pretty good with Roaming Throne. Although, is that what I need? No, not really. Peacekeeper. That one's actually effective against Recruiter. So maybe we'll keep that one. And 
Name a cleric, play a priest. And then I'm not gonna play the Brute Lord. Do we attack with Amalia? I guess we're pretty close to destroying the whole board. So I should be a little careful. If we blow up the board, who does that benefit? Probably still me. All right, never mind. We'll just chill and blow up the board next turn. Yeah, I kind of forgot about the second ability here. But uh, yeah, would let us attack for 20, points at 28. So shouldn't be too difficult to take over from there. So we can maybe play Minister just to get this over the edge. So yeah, play Minister and see how the House of Cards comes crumbling down. Pono could still have reinforcements they can play to chum block. That's fine. Another Shadow Rite Priest. Sure. So that happens. Get a bunch of death triggers as well. Those are fun. So I guess if they don't have uh, reinforcements, they're just dead. Okay, so Peacekeeper, have a look. And that's enough for a concession. All right, the secret mode on Amalia coming up. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. We'll need to find a couple more lands along the way, but for now, veteran into pilgrim. And then maybe can hold overseer until after we play roaming throne to get double card draw. Opponent on red green aggro with turn on Swiss spear. Hmm. Yeah, we could play pilgrim now. We could play peacekeeper first. Maybe that's worth it. And then we can maybe tax one of their pump spells. So we'll go for Peacekeeper. Seeing Audacity. Iconoclast play with fire. So what's your opponent going to do next turn? Probably kick Iconoclast if they get to choose. So probably go for Iconoclast here, even though I don't want them to play with fire my creatures necessarily. Uh, Audacity, also going to be somewhat annoying. Probably not as annoying as Iconoclast hitting me. So yeah, Iconoclast it is. And then we can attack for one since we're not going to block. And then, yeah, hopefully deploy Roaming Throne before emptying the rest of our hand. Just by playing Roaming Throne on Cleric, we would gain two life, so they might play with Fire as a Veteran here. Take four. And play with Fire goes upstairs. All right. Don't mind seeing that. Gonna get that two life back right away. And Peacekeeper can attack. And then next turn we can go Pilgrim into Overseer, gaining a ton of life in the process. Godric is acceptable, doesn't fly just yet. Opponent has to pass. Oh yes, this is gonna be glorious. Pilgrim into Overseer. Gaining six life, drawing two cards. And we've got a decent follow-up here. Mm, probably no need to attack. We're starting to take over. We'll start with Overseer, might pick up one of our two drops that grows whenever we gain life. Can't wait on Veteran. Shadow Ride Priest is also welcome. Evangelist and a land. 
So could go Evangelists, could also play another Veteran first to set up even more life gain. Not in a hurry to close out the game necessarily. Yeah, this is where having Amalia would be pretty fun. Forty-four, can hit for two. And that's probably it. Swiss spear. We can take all day. And I go for the throat now too. Now Minister can start pumping our flyer. And then double battle cry trigger with Evangelist is likely game next turn. I guess if we did have Voice of the Blast in play, we would not get to experience all these triggers, because the game would have been over by now. And then, yeah, double battle cry trigger next turn is going to be quite a bit of damage. Opponent's going to pass, no real need to go for the throat. Toxrill, we can't quite cast here, but uh, yeah, we can activate ministers if we'd like, or just go to attackers, and our opponent's not going to make us go through the motions. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is far from perfect, but I'll keep it. Priest into Overseer, Throne on 4, and hopefully activate Priest on 5. Facing blue-eyed soldiers. Now we could play a Voice of the Blessed, which is a bit better. And then don't need to worry too much about counter spells. And then Overseer will grow it right away. A Vanguard could take the trade. Yeah, don't mind that. We're just trying to slow down the game a little bit. And I don't have any other life gain to make voice a 4-4. Another priest, so now we could play two of them next turn. Also reasonable to just go for a roaming throne. Opponents hanging on to three mana, could be reinforcements. It's possible they have a counter spell. Although seems weird into cavern, so I'm not gonna put them on a counter spell. So reinforcements it is. And I'll keep Overseer back. This name's Cleric. So at least we can't lose Throne to a Brutal Cathar because of Ward. Ooh, the Shield of Argive. That one's scary. Especially if it's paired with Harbin. Okay, so Double Priest seems like the move here. And then hope that Toxrill can show up in time. Would be a nice answer to all the tokens, so maybe that's a fun interaction we get to see. Still gonna play defense. And yeah, we just need to untap with one of our priests. Brule Cathar deals with one of them. Opponent passes. And it's uh, Toxrill time, I believe. Can attack first. Immediately make some tokens. And then next turn we can pretty easily cast a Brute Lord. Putin did have Harbin to go with shield. But I don't think they'll be able to pull off those synergies. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is far from amazing, but I think we still keep. Pilgrim, double evangelist. 
can uh, maybe hold off on Cavern for a turn. If we find Amalia, we may want to play her first. Turn 1 mechanic could just be kind of a white artifact aggro deck, in which case go for the throw. It's not going to have many targets. Alright, blue-white. And an attack for two we'll take. Opponent might have a counterspell here. I'm going to play Vangelis before attacking, in case they have a token they can make. And I guess with Cavern we don't need to worry about counters. So if they have a token, like one from Virtue of Loyalty, do we care if they trade here? Not really. Hoverbike, all right, that's going to tap down Pilgrim, so we can't attack. So it is a vehicles deck after all. Haven't seen one of those in a while. So yeah, go for the throat, not going to be at its best. Prototype can also be crewed by the mechanic, 3-4. But our opponent's gonna get in with a hover bike to make a pilot. That one we can at least take out with the go for the throat, but not before it crews prototype. So it doesn't really help me. Can still attack with a bat token. And then probably just go evangelist tap land. Can offer the trade for pilgrim. Their opponent's gonna build up an ever-increasing army of pilot tokens. Hangar also waits to animate their vehicles. And then Reckoner Raid can eventually give vehicles menace. They might be running Grease Fang, which I guess we can still go for the throat. And now a Born to Drive to grow the Hoverbike. And they're gonna keep attacking, but now for six. And I guess Prototype's also getting in. It's an attack for a 9, make that 10 damage. Can take out Pilot Token with Go for the Throat, play Priest. How much damage are we talking? So that's 4, plus 6 is 10, plus 6 is 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah, that should be lethal. They can crew, but not have anything back on defense. And then we should have just enough here to cross the finish line. Battle cry does add up. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Not loving this. No life gain to enable voice. No black mana. Brute Lord in hand. This is a bit better. And uh, yeah, it's a close call what to keep. Could just bottom the roaming throne, keep the cheaper creatures. Although with our tap lands, maybe it is just veteran that goes, and then pilgrim can also enable voice. And roaming thrones may be a bit more powerful if the game goes on. Slide of hand, so mono blue. Hoping to find Cavern. Alright. Peacekeeper could also come in handy. For now, Pilgrim. Can help enable voice. So it makes sense to play it first. And we want to try and keep Shadow Rites as something we can maybe protect from a counterspell. So we'll likely attack, go for Peacekeeper, which is going to get countered, and then hope to double spell two drops on turn four. And uh, yeah, hoping the Priest resolves. Drawing the Brute Lord is not ideal. Still need to hit some land drops to get to five mana.
All right, prankster to mill, so no counter. So it might be a fairy stack after all. Opponent picks up essence scatter. And consider. So we're going to get a lot of valuable information and we can sculpt our next few turns. Double flow of knowledge, so the late game's taken care of. Negate we don't care about. So yeah, just name essence scatter, making it cost 4 mana. Although we could also name flow, make it impossible for them to cast. And then we'll try and navigate our way past an essence scatter. That's also reasonable. Because if I'm going to miss my land drops while our opponent gets to draw a million cards, that's going to be a problem. Alright, change of plan. We'll name Flow of Knowledge. It would be different if we could guarantee that the opponent cannot essence scatter Priest, but they can just cast it for 4 mana. Opponent goes for Prankster. Can still attack into it. And then now we can double spell. I imagine they'll counter the voice. And then Priest can pump the team. Okay, and then now we're just one mana away from Toxril. Five mana, can't cast Flow, so gotta consider to try and find answers. They could still find a bounce spell, which can punish me for sacking a creature. So, step one is probably to attack with Peacekeeper Pilgrim. There's also Fortress we can activate at some point. Opponent jumps. And they are going to bounce our priest before we can activate. That's fine. Pilgrim is still 2 2 death touch. Kills Prankster. So they might have been better off blocking Peacekeeper. Could replay priests, although now I'm kind of more into the roaming throne idea. Even if it gets countered, just want to get these expensive cards out of my hand. Essence Scatter does exactly that. So 5 plus 3 is 8. So Fortress activation is lethal. So we didn't even need Toxrill to close it out. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand is relying pretty heavily on this Lunark Veteran. Gonna take a bit of damage in the process. I'll try it on the play. Hopefully we'll draw a few more lanes so we can curve out perfectly. Two drop, maybe three drop, double two drop. We're faced with a decision, but I think it's a pretty easy one. Just play voice, next turn play another, and a tap land. Up against a red-green. Dinosaurs, okay. Well, if we can get our creatures large enough, they might be able to compete with some of the larger dinos out there. A roaming Throne, also quite nice on this board, if we find a land for it. A Lunark Veteran putting in overtime. Opponent's got 4 mana, 4 Hulking Raptors, so next turn that's going to unlock even more mana. Um, yeah, Evangelist probably over Pilgrim. So we get two veteran triggers. And I think I'm still happy to trade for Hulking Raptor on the ground. Almost considered attacking with the veteran as well. Okay, so opponent's back down to a reasonable five mana for Hammer Skull. Do they also have a chomp here to kill voice? Just another paleontologist, so no answer to the flyer. And uh, Overseer will trigger voice twice. Plus the uh, battle cry attack should be lethal. All 
All right, so a quick veteran into double voice. Got the job done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a hand that's missing a two drop, but we've got a lot we could find in the meantime. And then Evangelist, good on three, but also a good follow up to Roaming Throne. Opponent black white, and there is a priest, perfect. Don't expect my priest to stick around for long against black white, make that Esper. Okay, at least we can play Evangelist here. There's a small chance they could make a 2 2 token, but playing Evangelist, I don't really detect any pauses, so. I think the coast is clear to attack. A Loram, just as a blocker here. That's fine. And yeah, we can play Roaming Throne now. We are still missing a second black to activate Priest next turn, potentially. We'll try this, get double battle cry from Throne. Put on trades. And the second Evangelist will still be a great follow up. Shieldred doesn't look too scary. So, could even Veteran plus Voice of the Blessed and grow a bunch? Or we can go wide with Evangelist, either way. Play Veteran first, and on this board, yeah, let's just get uh, Evangelist in play. If I were to attack all out, what happens? I get double battle cry, so the bat hits for three. Yeah, this is just lethal, I think. If they block roaming throw and they're still taking five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, more than enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a promising hand. A veteran into Pilgrim, into Voice, against a creature deck. So don't expect too much interaction, even found our Priest. Although can maybe wait to deploy it to save it from a Brutal Cathar. Do I want to trade? I wouldn't be opposed to it, although since we're holding Voice, that's a reason not to. And then, yeah, we could go for turn 2 voice, make it a 3-3, hold off Vanguard if they remove it. Then uh, we've got some decent follow-ups. So we'll take 3. And Peacekeeper, yeah, it, that can actually name Shadow Rite Priest, not only making it cost 4, but then the activation will also cost 7 mana total. So that would be a good name. But they might go for Overseer to throw us off curve, or maybe Roaming Throne. And goes for Priest. Alright, so don't think we'll get to activate Priest this game, but we still have a decent uh, hand otherwise. The voice up to a 5-5. Don't mind attacking with it. If they have a Brutal Cathar left, they probably would have played it earlier, but um, they could top deck one. And then if they remove it, they get to attack me anyways. I would be okay trading here and here. And if they double block, I'm also happy. Alright, double block it is. So, they must not have removal, but now we're back on the Shadow Right Priest plan. I see Doomscar Warrior, kind of unexpected here. They get to attack. I'll take it. So, play... I guess we don't have double black. We're actually pretty far from double black for a Priest activation. So maybe for now, Roaming Throne. 
Or we can play Pilgrim Keep Up by Ganjo, which is decent too. And then I'll hang back with Overseer. It's a bit of a strange game. Not the typical mono white aggro. Alright, looks like I Ganjo is gonna be successful here. Taking out Doomscar Warrior. And then do we want to trade? Since we have another copy, why not? Now, opponent will get to train Initiate, which can eventually destroy enchantments and artifacts. But uh, getting to play Roaming Throne into Overseer to draw to seems worthwhile, since we need to find more black mana. And then Overseer hangs back to block Adversary. So I'm fine with how this game is progressing. This is a bit of an interesting attack though, since of course we could just block the initiate with the Roaming Throne. So what does it imply? Opponent, kind of a green-white counterish deck. I think I just do this. Don't want to put Roaming Throne in harm's way. Might be their own Igunjo. Trade happens. And a Virtue of Loyalty. Okay. So now I guess they can activate the initiative they'd like. Uh, Peacekeeper could name Initiate as well, but I think it's time for Overseer, uh, leaving Cavern untapped so we can hopefully still deploy Shadow Rite. And there we go, still no double black. So there's an argument for a voice here, actually. Sure. And then Roaming Throne can attack. Already a 6-6. Six, six. So they can spend 5 mana destroying Roaming Throne. Okay, now maybe Pilgrim. And then we'll see a response from Initiate. Before we get more triggers. And play Evangelists to grow a voice even more. And yeah, that's going to be enough for a concession. Awesome, and we get to rank up once again. Alright, so we got to see our clerics in action, and I'm quite impressed. The deck is capable of explosive starts, where we curve out and pump the team with Shadow Ride Priest. We can also build up huge threats with Voice of the Blessed and now Amalia too. And then the incidental life gain also helps out against other aggro decks in the format. And then we can also occasionally play a longer game with Roaming Throne providing a lot of value, especially alongside Overseer and Evangelist making tokens. We can go wide, we can go tall, we can gain life, we can also try and close out games with our creature land now, and Cavern of Souls helps against opposing counter spells. And then occasionally we've got this instant win button with Shadow Rite Priest putting Toxtral into play, especially when facing other creature decks. So I think the main weakness remains control decks with lots of sweepers like Sunfall, so Anointed Peacekeeper is important there, and if you were to play this in best of three, don't be afraid to add cards like Thalia to the deck, despite it not being a cleric. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!